Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the official episode one of the Houston Texans rebuild. Now, if this is the first video you're tuning into, this is actually a, a pretty unique Houston Texans rebuild because we're technically five and a half years into the future of what the league is today of me recording this of 2022, which meaning it is the 20. 27 season and four which means it is the sixth season of in this franchise mode and we did go over the league history technically in my last uh video that i i reviewed but this was last season the titans winning a division rival winning the super bowl against the atlanta falcons lamar jackson coming off of an mvp my verbal with the Raiders winning coach of the year and Cooper Cup and Nick Boza winning offensive defensive player of the year awards. And um, it's only gotten worse for Houston. Now, I was not controlling anybody in this um, season up to this point. I'm technically just role playing, uh, you know, I'm a free agent, head coach, or general manager. And now, all of a sudden, Houston has fired. They've cleaned house at a 1-6 record here in Week 9. And I have gotten the head GM spot. So it's me here calling the shots now for the Houston Texans. Um, in this franchise file save, the previous years, I controlled the Tennessee Titans. So my new job... Doesn't take me out of the division. It actually keeps me in the same division. And it's not something I would necessarily, you know, be excited for. Except for, well, one cool thing about it is I'll get to see my old team. So it's going to be interesting. And that's actually what I want to get into as far as gameplay goes. Uh, against the Tennessee Titans. Who have crumbled since I left. Right away, a quick fall at 2-6. Two and, two and six. It is no David Mills. It is Mac Austin, who's 24. You know, we could use, try and build around him, but I got to tell you, man, the normal dev, I'm not liking it. He is on his contract year, so it would be it would be kind of important for us here, I think, to, I don't know, try and get out of this if we can before we have to pay this man big money. Then again, I don't even know what the draft looks like. I'm going to be at a disadvantage here. We do have a lot of young quarterbacks, but all really seem to be around the same. Mac Austin is going to be the best out of the three by far. He's got the arm. Maybe we could continue to build with him. He's from, you know, the Nebraska quarterback. Um, I mean, overall, his stats are decent. They are decent. He's 6'5". But let's see what he has done so far. And it's going to be kind of just looking at this. He has he struggles with interceptions. Yeah. Ah. Uh, these are not good stats for Madden 23. I, I promise you. Just trust me. These are not good stats. So. Overall, has he won any type of award? He's not an award winner. He was the 13th pick in the 2024 draft. And it just has not worked out for you. And I do think we're going to probably try, have to move on. But looking here, we don't, man, it is, this is rough. You know, you got a young running back who's 22 years old, who's 79 overall, and J.R. Newberry from Miami. He's only a star dev, though. But I think, I think this is a future running back. I think we need to go straight ahead and give him time. I don't know if that's what they've been doing or not. Probably not. I think he needs to be our number one right away. Yeah, they're not really giving him the carries he deserves. His rookie year, he had a, a pretty good, decent bit of carries and eight eight rushing touchdowns. Decent. He fumbled twice, though. So maybe a fumbling problem. I'm not sure there. J.R. Newberry. Matter of fact, what pick was this? I'm just, just wondering here. Um, awards. He was their second pick. Their first overall pick in the second round of 2026. So you see the running back spot though. It's not it's not very good. Not very good indeed. 
Uh, for wide receivers, it's pretty bad as well. Brandon Cooks, he's old on his way out. Hopefully, we can get rid of him, you know, after this year. Let him play out his contract. I'm not sure what kind of contract he's on. Demetrius Greer is probably the upside here. That's about it. Um, and I don't really think he is that big of an upside. He is a star dev. And he has had a... He had a breakout year in 25 but hasn't done much since then. So, interesting. He's from Maine. He was the fourth, a fourth pick. So for being a fourth pick is actually not bad. But a rookie wide receiver that the last GM brought in here in Josh Romero, this might actually be a good pick. He's a rookie, 23 years old, 75 overall. This actually might be the future as he is a hidden dev. Okay, so. At least the old GM of Houston gave me something to work with here. Um, going to be interesting to see. I don't think he's getting much playtime. I want to see what this guy is. I mean, this is their second round pick six. I mean, you can see the high picks. So you can, you know, I'm not lying when I say this team has struggled. And um, yeah, that's it, dude. That's seriously it. Um, we do have Bobby Sutton. Don't want to overlook anybody here. 96 speed. He is the fastest guy. See, I just see 25 years old at 77 overall. And I'm just not really, you know, it's, you can look over these kind of players. But this is a guy that you might want to keep around because he's got that speed. And he hasn't got much playing time, unfortunately. But uh, he was a seventh round pick. That is a freaking steal. I'm not going to lie. Wow. Okay. That was a wide receiver situation. At tight end, we did kind of skim this. And I do have a little bit of an idea that I want to try and try and pull all my subscribers away from other teams that are willing to give them up and bring them here. This is James Skaggs. He, he is going to be staying here for as long as I can keep him. I mean, 26-year-old, 92 overall. As long as we can get his dev up, I think he's going to be good for the long haul. What has he done in his career? Decent numbers. I would like to see him break that. You know, he... he was from New York here, played his rookie contract out, did decent, hasn't gotten back to that level since. We want to change that. So hopefully we can, you know, do exactly that. And, uh, yeah. So, O-line. Tunsil, want to go ahead and get him out of there. He's, he's pretty old. Um, we got, you know... <laughs> We got some work to do. Kenyon Green, this was a this is a big big player to have on your squad. I, I like this guy. We'll keep him around for the long haul. Um, I think he's just going to be a big a big part of this team going into the future. Eli Jeffers, uh, twenty five year old center, seventy seven overall. Only one center on the roster here, but he is a normal dev from Toledo. You know, not bad. Um, Hayden Pitts. And Jamal Howell, um, Hayden Pitts, 24-year-old. Is he a star dev? Okay, there you go. That's what I was wondering. This is a guy that wants to take. The O-line is actually not in a bad spot. O-line is actually not in a bad spot. A little old on the on the tackles on the ends here. We'll have to fix that. Those are one of the, this is the most important part of the O-line. But overall, the O-line, I've seen worse. I have seen worse. So I'm glad to see that. It's kind of unique here. Defensive line, Dewani Smoot. Oh my goodness, 32 year old. That's all they have on the roster. Okay. But they have three right ends um, Trent Eddins, Carl Lawson, and Devon McAllister. So Trent Eddins is actually a guy I'm pretty sure they drafted in the first year when I was controlling the Titans. He was a superstar dev, and he's, he was. I thought he was going to be better than what he was. I felt like, a, yeah, they, yep, this is the first draft pick, I bet. Let's see. I bet he's in the first round. Yeah, this is their first pick ever, actually. Trent Eddins was their first pick ever in this franchise file. Um, and he hasn't done anything, man. And it's probably, I mean, I don't know. He's getting playing time. Yeah, he hasn't done much. We'll keep our eyes on him. Maybe he's a trade asset. He's 27 already and only an 80 overall, but he is a superstar dev. Honestly, you guys let me know what you think about Trent Eddins. Uh, he's a little slow, too. I honestly, I mean, maybe he'll play better at DT, but that's looking like a trade asset there. Carl Lawson, Devon McAllister. 
Is he a hidden dev? No, he's not. So they missed there. Interesting. De defensive line, on uh, well, the end at least, is pretty weak, man. For DT, though, I know they're pretty strong here. At least I know Earl Howell. He was giving me hell <laughs> with the Titans. Um, 25-year-old superstar dev here. I remember when they drafted this guy. This is uh, the same year, I'm pretty sure, as Eddins. Um, exactly, yeah. And he's had a lot better career. I mean... He's playing in the middle of the line. That's second year here. Seven sacks, dude. That's pretty good. Then he did it again. Almost did it again. 26 with six tack, uh, sacks. He knows how to get the quarterback in. He's, he can tackle as well. So, I think we'll probably be keeping him around, actually. Um, awards. No awards, but he was drafted the third round. So, that's a steal. Um, we'll keep him around. He's 25. And, uh, yeah. So, there's your DTs. For left outside linebackers, you see it here. Isaiah Mc, McMullen, star dev, 23 years old, 79 overall. I think this is a guy we want to start. Yeah, or like right away. Um, probably could trade Cameron Thomas, uh, honestly. <clears throat> For middle linebacker, Matt Lesdowski, we have the best middle linebacker in the league. And that is the biggest upside about this team as a whole. The problem here is he's 29 years old, and now we have to kind of start worrying about regression. So we're getting him maybe at his peak, but there's only going down from here, I feel. So how long can he stay on top now, I guess, is the question. And um, only time will tell with this, but he is a, a very good player to have as of right now. And then backing him up as TJ Edwards as well. We run two mill linebackers. You know, he'll be on the field. Malik Elam, who actually won rookie a rookie of the year award. Um, he is probably the best draft pick that they have drafted since they came in, uh, since the franchise started. Oh, and he's actually got an upgrade here. Uh, let's just go power rusher, I guess. Um, this guy, he was probably the toughest guy to play against when I was with the Titans controlling the titans he yeah i mean he did his thing he just now actually had a, a breakout year last year with 11 and a half sacks first time he ever hit di double digits there but you can see he's he's had a decent career so far he's only getting better really he's looking like he's hit a new level honestly so his contract he just signed a new contract we'll be keeping him for the long haul um <clears throat> You can see it there. That was a first round pick, pick seven in 2023. So he's been with the team for a while and he's here to stay. They also have rookie Frank Walton that they drafted, who is a hidden dev. So it seems as though Houston's old general manager really liked drafting outside linebackers. We have two hidden devs here. Uh, we'll see what we could do with Frank. Maybe we could move him to middle linebacker. I'm not sure. What his coverage is like. I like having a guy who can cover when they're middle linebacker and he can't do that. So we'll see. Maybe move him to left outside linebacker. I don't know. We'll, we'll think about that. For cornerbacks, Carlson, or excuse me, Carlos Middleton, 24, 81, year, uh, 81 overall, superstar dev. They just drafted this guy two seasons ago. Seasons ago, we also have Dewan Cannon here. And, um, I mean, it's pretty weak here. You got to get this a little more deep. Our number one guy is just an 85 overall, and he's... I will say what helps with this is that they're pretty young, not too old. I think this isn't necessarily the biggest worry so far, especially with Carlos Middleton being a superstar dev. Um, I, I like this. This guy that they drafted. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. For safeties, they got Kenny Beasley, Cordell Reed, and Dwight Skandrick. Um, I like to have my safeties up better, you know. And it looks like Beasley's actually hurt here. Just for a week, though. It's so nothing too serious. But we'll see. We'll see. And then strong safety, Johnny Worthy. Is he worthy of the squad, though, is the question. I don't know why they're running 
three deep and strong safety. But he is a superstar dev, and um, see what his contract is, because I'm not sure if I want to actually. Okay, he he just signed a contract. It's actually not a lot of money either. So, dude, that's like a. We'll keep him around for sure. Um, and he is a star dev. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how he plays. Um, I don't know what to think about that. Kicker. Austin. <laughs> okay. Um, let's take a look at the schedule. So besides winning one game, which I don't know what happened in this game, but the 49ers got that second quarter. They gave up 27 points. I don't know what happened. A bunch of turnovers. Uh, it was embarrassing. Maybe. I, I don't know. But, but uh, Mac Austin went off in this game. And, um, I mean, the rest is history. The 49ers got embarrassed. But we haven't won since then. And it's, it's funny because we embarrass 49ers and then we get a 50 bomb dropped on us by the Bills. Okay. And Zach Keister. And uh, you can kind of see a trend. Our offense is pretty miserable. I mean... Besides, take away the 40 bomb that we dropped on the 49ers. We've only scored 21 points or more once. If you add to 41, that's twice. That's it. Like, and we got skunked. Completely got, you know, got an egg show dropped on us against the Saints on Thursday night football. Our, our offense is pretty bad, man. A lot of these games are, are winnable if we have an offense. So we'll see. I mean, the Bills game ain't winnable. I don't think the Buccaneers game is going to be winnable. But if we have an offense, man, we can win these other games. So we need to focus on offense. We're actually going. We come. We're, they're coming off of a bye. So they ended up deciding to fire their GM. They hire us here. It's the Browns, Chargers, Colts, Jaguars. We are going to be focusing on the Titans Thursday night game. We're going to actually hop into that game. And I'm going to give you guys gameplay. Um, and, and we'll get to see what the team really looks like but for now in this episode we're going to sim to that point and see what what we're dealing with here see what happens uh i can't do any trading because the trade deadline has happened what we could do really quick is take a look at uh what are the contracts looking like so contracts we're kind of going to be stuck in <clears throat> We got Brandon Cooks actually for another year after this. So we'll, he's going to take a big hit in regression. He's going to be under 80 overall. So that's going to kind of suck. But we could possibly trade him that year, you know, if, if anyone wants him. Um, honestly, there's not too many bad contracts here that I'm thinking like, oh, crap, you know. I wish we could get out of that. I, I like a lot of these. Um, the biggest thing here that's good for us is we have a lot of money. Mac Austin is coming off of a rookie contract. We could get his fifth year option if we want to buy some time, but we don't have to pay this guy. We really don't. We can try and address this either in free agency or in the draft, and uh, we'll be good there. We'll end up letting Tony Pollard go. Yeah, man. I'm. You know what? This is fine. There's not. We're not into much of a bad way here for contracts. We have money. Um, adjusted cap at right now is 330 or that's going to be next year. And we have a total cap penalty right now of 10.3 million. That's not even close to our rollover, not even half. So we're good in money. All right. I want to try and keep these videos under 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and get some simming done. And, um, let's see what happens, man. We really don't know much. I think I, I you know, I want to have an episode focused on just what the the college players look like. I don't want to try and fit that in this as well. And we actually get a win. It's a defensive win, but we get a win. Uh, we're one and zero as a as the GM here. Uh, we beat the Browns ten to seven. Wow, what a statement! What a statement to make because they are six and two, and now we're two and six. We do have some upgrades here, so that's good. Um. Matt Ladowski. I'm just going to auto upgrade for now because I'm not really sure who I'm keeping, who I'm not keeping. There's going to be a lot of big changes come the offseason. So I want to go ahead and kind of get these 
rolling. Um, I'm not. If I'm quick simming, I'm not really gonna focus. Oh no, I guess I have to train. This is the only way I can train this way. All right, this is no, nothing I want to set. I want to set who we're focusing on training. Hold up now. Charles Peterson is a hidden dev from Wake Forest. Now he's a 65 overall though. Do we start Char Charlie Peterson? Frank Walton. Do we focus on him? I mean, oh, I don't know, man. I didn't know he was hidden dev. I didn't know that. I, see, I will say, I will give it, I will, if I have to talk good about this game, I will say this. Their um, draft, like draftees or whatever that they generate in this game are actually pretty interesting because you can come across 65 overall hidden devs like he could be a, a x factor like i've seen it so you know i don't know i don't think he would be he's, he's probably either a superstar or a star because there's a glitch that kind of gives it away in the training i guess we'll just have to wait and see man at this point um i am going to keep an eye on him though if he has an upgrade i'm going to do that manually but now we have Possibly a position battle. I mean, it's not really a position battle. We know that Mac Austin's gonna give us the best chance to win, but we are two and six, right? So, I feel like there should be like a chance that we move on from him right now. Um, I'm not gonna do any negotiating until the end of the season, and I see where everyone's at. Larmy Tunsil, though, I will be letting him go, even though he wants to sign back. Same with Tony Pollard. We know all these. Well, it's actually funny because it says they're not interested. <clears throat> I'm fact, saying everyone's not interested. All of these players are leaving, actually. Except for up to this point. Or up to this point. Wow, so we're losing these players. Oh my goodness, we're losing Mac Austin. We don't have a choice. We're not going to get to keep this guy. Whoa. Okay, that that definitely uh makes things a little more interesting. We okay, we have now our cap space it's saying for next season is 137, 137 million. What happened here against the Browns? Mostly focused on the quarterback, Mac Austin, for two picks. Okay. You know what? We're coming off of a win. Next time we lose, Mac Austin's getting benched. All right, you know what? We're doing it. We're going to go ahead and bench Mac Austin. I know I know it sounds crazy cuz he threw the 4. But um you know, he's feel, he's he's feeling a little under the weather this week. He's a little sick and uh, he's not going to be able to start. Keep it realistic. And we drop the game against the Colts. So we are now at a 2-8 and eight record. Man. Question here is, well, how did he play? How did uh, Charlie Peterson play? Let's, um, let's take a look here. I mean, he kept it close. He kept it competitive. No, he didn't because he didn't start. <laughs> I guess they automatically subbed him out. Huh. Okay. You know? That's a little, uh, little weird that that happened, but that's fine. Anyways, I guess Mac Austin gets an upgrade, so we'll go ahead and upgrade his field general so Mac Austin keeps it close. All right, we're going to send one more here. We have technically went over 30 minutes, at least as far as the raw footage goes, um, uncut. So I want to, I'm going to, maybe I didn't make the change. Let me make sure I make the change. I mean, I don't know, it was a little weird. Like, I swear I did this. I have to make sure I save it. 
I don't know. Let me make sure it, it saved. Okay, he's there. He's there for sure. Double checked. So, we're two and eight. And the Titans did not turn their year around, so they are, uh, they're done, man. They're three and seven. Kind of weird, not gonna lie. Okay, it's also, is it changing my people around? I really don't know what's going on, man. So we have not won since week nine. So we are one in three as a GM. And we will be watching Thursday Night Football in next episode. And hopefully we can come away with that win. Um, we're also, you know, I'm going to have videos. We're going to, you know, at the beginning of the video, of next video, we are also, we'll take a look at just the league and see how it's going um, around the league. But there is actually a playoff picture, so I'll leave it here for this episode. This is what the playoffs are looking like. Zach Keister playoff with the Bills. Um, the Chiefs have Jay Fresh and Jamie Bell still dominating the NFC. I mean, is he looking to go to the Super Bowl three times in a row? Possibly. He's 8-3. Eight, eight and three. And we are not technically the worst team yet. All right. The commanders are worse than us, so that's okay. We have a win as a GM. That's all that matters. We have a lot to do here, though. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be hard. And it's looking like uh, the draft class does not have any quarterbacks to take. So this is going to be interesting. Man, I've never been this late into a franchise save file, switch teams to the worst team, and feel like I'm way behind in the, the whole league. Um, I didn't sum it up. I didn't get to say truly goodbye to my, my Tennessee Titans here on channel, that is. But just look at this team I built, man. Toby Spitzer. X-Factor. Draft him as an X-Factor. 96 overall. Derrick Henry. He's 33. He did regress to an 87. But, I mean, we have a superstar dev to just walk right into that spot after. I mean, he's not going to be like Derrick Henry. But, uh, you know, he's a, he's, he's a good second. I brought in McCole Hardman. Drafted Tim Ford, who's an 82 overall after just one year. Uh, didn't have G.J. Chark. That changed. Mac Wilson's for me as well. So I will say this this wide receiver core has gotten worse since I left. And so it has the tight ends. But the O-line is me. Look at this O-line. So good. Um, they're still struggling with injuries, though. Nate Davis always struggled with injuries. But, I mean, this they have one of the best O-lines and one of the best defensive lines. Matter of fact, no, not one of the best. The best defensive line. Harold Landry, 88 overall, Super Bowl MVP. Uh, Dom Holmes, 94 overall. I drafted him. 90, you know what I mean? 25 years old. Jeffrey Simmons, 98 overall. Philip Montgomery drafted him, 83 overall. Devin White brought him in from free agency. Timmy Train. Jason St. Louis drafted him. Best outside, best linebacking core in, in, in the league. Christian Fulton, Caleb Farley grew fantastically. 98, 93, that's y'all's, I mean, come on. This team shouldn't be how bad they are. Marcus Callahan and Nathan Thomas did not, obviously you can see I didn't do this. But so farewell to Tennessee. Thank you guys, and that technically was supposed to be last episode. Just wanted to take one last look at them. They've already kind of changed a little bit, um, losing their safeties. I see is the biggest hole. Either way, though, they are still a very dominant squad, 90 overall, and uh, they're four and seven. Technically, I think they still have a shot here, but uh, can we ruin their hopes? Let's find out next episode. It's gonna take a lot for us to win, though. Um, we got a lot to do here. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next one.